What's up everybody, this is Phil Steppen, and today's video will be a tips and tricks video on passing your driving test, and what you need to do to get there, and so on and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I just need to touch on one thing real quick. This is my Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 gameplay, and I'm going to be showing you all this so you can have something to look at while you listen to my commentary about the driver's test. So the driver's test. Really, it's very simple. There's only a few things you have to do and keep in mind. But they are very useful tips, and I want to share them because I've had many a friend fail because of stupid things. And I do not want you to suffer the same fate. So here we go. So as far as getting your permit goes, you're going to have to take a written test. And it's extremely easy. And in addition to the written test, you're going to have to complete a driver's ed. And as far as driver's ed goes, I did it online. Big mistake. You need to do it in in the real, physically, with like a coach. Because online is just a pain in the ass and it's not worth it. So that's my tip about doing driver's ed is definitely do not do it online. Do it with a coach. It might take more time, but it's worth it. And what I mean by coach is like, the ones we have is like Coach Miller's driving school. And it's basically just you and like three other students that are basically just people your age drive around. And you learn how to drive. It's really easy and it's a lot better than doing it online. So as far as going up to the DPS to take your written test, it is very, very easy. But what you need to study for your written test is uh, signs, for instance, You'll probably be quizzed about signs like slippery when wet, and it'll show you like a rectangular octagon, and it'll say, what is this? And obviously, like, it's a stop sign. But there'll be a lot of signs, and then there'll be a lot of extremely obvious stuff like, what should you always do when you get in the car? Wear your seatbelt. So study signs, because those can really be some of the only tricky things especially if you don't really pay that much attention when you're driving around with your parents. So, another thing you can study is the traffic fines. For instance, if I am speeding by 20 miles an hour, how much can I be fined? And then it's like, however much it is. And you'll be studying all this stuff in a little book that you were given. And you don't really have to study very much at all to pass, but... If you just check over these few particular things, you'll be good. So, traffic fines and signs are the main things. And then one thing that they'll throw out to scare you is, if you're convicted of a DWI, then can you have your license suspended? Yes or no? And the answer is yes. And obviously this is just a tactic that they try to use to scare people. You know, obviously they're like, oh, well, this age group is at risk, so maybe if we throw this in every test that we make them take, they'll be less susceptible to DWIs or DUIs. And it's pretty stupid, but you will almost for sure come across one of those questions. And basically, if they're, if it's an extreme punishment, like license suspension or multi-thousand dollar fine, chances are it's true. So, that's just a little small tip that you probably won't find in a book anywhere. So, you'll go to the DPS, Take your ticket. It'll take forever. The people will be rude, probably. And then you'll take a super easy test on a computer. Have to pass a little eye examination thing. And then they'll give you a uh, temporary license and mail you your or license permit. And mail you your permanent one. Now, it is worth noting that I live in Texas. So a lot of these tips are very, very useful. But some of them might not be exactly true to other states. For instance, like the permit one, uh, I think the permits are different ages. Although the test information will be useful and accurate, the age specifics and whatnot might be completely accurate. Okay, so let's fast forward a few months. You've gotten your permit, you've done all your practical hours, and you're ready to go get your license. I In Texas, it works like if you get your permit, you have to wait six months in between getting your permit and getting your license. So, you're ready. You have gotten all your practical hours and you're 16 or whatever. So, here are the tips that I'm going to give you. 
first of all the dps it's a terrible place or the dmv or whatever it's called the place where you're going to get your license the people are rude. Every person that's there is going to be angry and stressed out. So it's an environment that doesn't lend itself well to someone who can already be kind of nervous. I know some people get kind of freaked out whenever they're going to take their test. You know, oh, I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. Especially because in Texas, if you fail three times, I think you have to retake driver's ed. So it can really step on people's nerves and cause them to make mistakes that they wouldn't normally make just normally driving. So what you're going to need to do in preparation for the possible stress is you're going to need to bring something that can keep you entertained while you're up there. Headphones and an iPod would work, like a, a Game Boy or something. Whatever you, And don't just rely on texting, especially if you're going on a school day. Because, you know, some your friends not, might not be able to text in a certain class. So, I would really recommend a good podcast like Painkiller Already or State of the Game. And then a, a pair of headphones. So you can just kind of tune everyone out and stay calm. So, that will be very helpful. Because most people that fail, fail because of nerves. Now, in addition to failing because of nerves... People will fail just because they don't know what people will mark them down for. And as I remember, the way it works is after you've given your ticket and you're about to be called up, they'll give you papers to fill out. And on one of the back of on one of the papers that they give you, there is a rubric. And a rubric is like those things in school when you like do a project and it has like twenty points, format, twenty points, color. 20 points, you know, uh, whatever you put in, content. That is a rubric. It's what, how many points they can take off based on what you do. So near the end, when you're kind of getting ready to take your test, take a look at the rubric and just kind of make sure you know what they're looking for and you know not what to violate. Thankfully, there's some things that's not on there, and I'm going to tell you what they are and help you. So after, and I'm getting to those, just stick with me here. After you get called up and your number finally gets called, it's probably been about four hours, you're probably a little salty. Um, you go up there and you're pretty nervous. They're going to send you out to your car and there's going to be like a five minute, really awkward, nervous suspense moment. And you can't let that get in your head. You just have to remember and tell yourself, this is just like all the practice driving I did. So the person's going to get in there. Make sure your phone's turned off before they get in your car and make sure your seatbelt's buckled. And they're going to speak to you in a very calm, robotic voice. Do not let this get in your head. They're not angry with you and you haven't done anything wrong. They just have to be calm and they can't really act like they're your friend. So don't let that little robot voice, I'm, I'm going to talk like this. Take a right at the next intersection. Don't let that get on your nerves. Don't let it bother you. That's a big deal. Now, as far as the things that aren't on the rubric or maybe are on the rubric but that fail people the most, mistake, commonly made mistakes that can fail you that you do not want to do. Number one, rolling through stop signs. Oh, my goodness, or stop lights. You see the stop sign there, you look both ways, there's no one coming. Slow down, almost to like 5 miles an hour, just take a right. Auto fail. When you see a stop sign or red light, you have to come to a complete stop. Make it exaggerated. Stop all the way. Sit there for maybe a whole second. Make sure your signal is on and then make your turn calmly. Make sure you don't get in the wrong lane either. You don't want to turn real wide and get in the other lane because they'll take points off for that even though it's not an auto fail it's not something that you want to do and the way the point system works it's like everything you do wrong is minus so many and then if you get below a certain number you fail the number is like 70 or something but there are things that will auto fail you like not making complete stops another thing that will auto fail you speeding even if it's like 3 miles an hour speeding can fail you so you definitely do not want to speed. Keep an eye on the speed limits and just don't go over them. But don't go way too far under the speed limit either. I knew a girl that failed because she went way too slow. You don't want to make that mistake. That's just silly. 
The main thing that everyone always worries about is parallel parking. Basically, the, the way you can beat that is just go up, like before you take your test, go up to the Department of Motor Vehicles after they close and just practice with the parent. It's really, really easy. And just if your uh, family owns multiple cars, use the smallest one possible. A few other tips I can throw in is always when you look at your mirrors, you want to exaggerate because the person's not going to be looking in your eyes like to w see what you're looking at, but they are going to be checking to see if when you change lanes, you look in your mirrors. So when you do look in your mirrors, you want to kind of look with your head, like make it a little bit of exaggerated head motions to let them know that you are looking in your mirrors. And the third, or not the third, the, the final tip I can give you for passing your driver's test is they are human. The people that are grading you, they are human. So if you do not understand what they're telling you to do, like if they say turn right, and you don't know if it's at this little uh, residential road or the intersection, ask. You're allowed to ask. Just ask very clearly, do you want me to make a right at this next intersection or right before? And they have to answer you. And always remember, if you do fail, which you shouldn't because you watch this video, but if you're taking your, your test second time around, just be calm and drive normally and you shouldn't fail. If this helped you in any way or even kept you entertained at the Department of Motor Vehicles, I would appreciate a like and a nice comment on the video. I'm Wiley, I go by Phil Steppen on the interwebs, and I am out.